Hello, I'm Charles Darling, and I write novels, plays, and non-fiction books. In this video, I continue to talk about Anywhere, Anytime stories and how they can help your novel, script or screenplay reach a wider international audience. In my previous video, which I include a link to below, I talked about their advantages, their disadvantages, and when to use them or not to use them. In this video, I discuss some examples of what you need to consider when writing an Anywhere, Anytime story. As mentioned in my previous video, the same object can have a different word or name to describe it in different English-speaking countries. As a rough guide, something invented between the early 1800s and about 1950 is more likely to have a different word or name for it in different versions of English, while objects and jobs invented since the 1950s usually have the same word or name across the English-speaking world. This is because English-speaking settlements across the world started to prosper independently of each other from the early 1800s onwards. Therefore, when people started using a new gadget, they would often give it a local name. From the 1950s onwards, the increase in global trade and rapid communication meant that new inventions would usually have the same name across English-speaking countries. Let's focus on three examples. The evolution of the car took off in the early 1900s. Therefore, the names for the parts of a car often differ, for example, between British English and American English. In the UK, a car's bonnet, windscreen and boot are the hood, windshield and trunk in the USA. Similarly, the word automobile is used much more frequently in the USA than in the UK, so try to avoid such words. If a character in your story must stand by a car's bonnet or an automobile's hood, why not describe them standing at the front of the vehicle? Linked to the car, in the UK we drive on the left and the steering wheel is usually located on the right. In the USA and most other countries, people drive on the right and the steering wheel is on the left. So when writing a story, don't have a motorist look over their right hand shoulder before merging with fast flowing traffic. While this makes sense in the UK, it would be dangerous in many other countries. Instead, just have the motorist looking over their shoulder and leave it up to the reader's imagination. Readers in the UK will automatically imagine the right shoulder while readers in the USA will imagine the left shoulder. If you must specify a particular side of the vehicle, I tend to say the driver's side or the passenger side, instead of right or left, or left or right. Not only do the names of some objects around the home differ between countries, particularly in kitchens and bathrooms, for example a UK tap is a faucet in the USA, but the layout and design of homes can also differ in many ways. In some countries windows open outwards, while in others they open inwards. Some countries have screen doors, some have shutters, while others have neither. In some countries cellars are commonplace, while in others they're rare. Therefore think twice if your character interacts with these parts of a house. For example, does your story's character really need to go down to the cellar to grab a murder weapon? Couldn't the weapon just be stored at the back of a kitchen cupboard instead? The numbering of floors or stories can also differ. The first floor is level with the street in the USA, while in the UK the first floor is upstairs because the ground floor is at street level. You can avoid this confusion in your story by just saying upstairs or downstairs. Alternatively, a character's action in the story can show which floor of the building they are on, for example if they enter the building from the street outside. The same job can have a different name or title in different countries. For example, someone who sells houses is an estate agent in the UK, while they're a realtor in the USA. It's difficult to find an alternative way to describe this job or profession. Therefore, I personally would probably avoid writing a story about this topic. However, if it's central to your story that your main character sells houses, then I'd suggest setting your story in a particular country, so that you can use the correct word for your main character's job. So when describing something in your story, script or screenplay, take a moment to think when it was invented and whether its name or terminology is global or local. Can you think of other different words for the same objects in various versions of English? How would you get around using them? What are your preferred alternatives? Please add your suggestions to this video's comments. As also mentioned in my previous video, people in different countries have different cultures, belief systems and expectations. Therefore, they would act in different ways to achieve their goals. Similarly, they would react in different ways when faced with a challenge. Let's look at another three examples. Gun ownership is higher in some countries than in others. You need to consider this when planning the actions of your story's characters. Imagine, for example, that the character wishes to murder someone, maybe a love rival. In the USA, this could involve a gun, 
while in the UK it would be more likely to involve hitting someone over the head with a blunt object or stabbing them with a knife. You can get round this conundrum by choosing a more interesting method to murder someone, such as poisoning. Maybe the story's character could use sleeping pills which are equally available in both countries. Just avoid using brand names because these will differ between countries. Some countries have far more CCTV or surveillance cameras than others. This could affect the escape plans of your story's villain. For example, a villain in the UK wouldn't use a getaway car because CCTV cameras would track it via its number plate or license plate as it drove along the roads, particularly in cities. Nor would the villain use public transport because cameras would photograph our villain's face each time they stepped onto a bus or a train. Instead, our villain could use a bicycle. Perhaps they stole the bicycle too. Health provision varies greatly between different countries, from non-existent to abundant, from regulated to informal, and from expensive to free. This will affect how your characters act. For example, if a child falls ill, do the child's parents consult a doctor, a pharmacist, or a witch doctor? Is the cure free, or does it cost a month's wages? Do they pray for a miracle, perhaps for divine intervention? As mentioned earlier in this video, if creating an anywhere, anytime story, I personally would avoid these issues by not having someone falling ill in my story. However, if it's central to your story that someone falls ill, then you should probably specify where the story is located so that the character's actions match the reader's expectations. Alternatively, the character's family could form part of a sect that rejects whatever help is available where they live, and instead they grind herbs from their own backyard to create their own medicine. This avoids having to specify where the story is set, and it could also create a more interesting story. Can you think of other cultural or behavioural variations between different countries? How would you get around them in your stories? What are your preferred alternatives? Please add your suggestions to this video's comments. Thank you for watching this video. Do you have other tips for how to create anywhere, anytime stories? If so, please add them to this video's comments. If your ideas are particularly good, I might even use them myself. Please also check out the rest of my YouTube channel, especially where I discuss the various books that I've written. I hope my channel encourages you to buy my books and to read them if you haven't already done so. Finally, please feel free to leave comments below and to like and subscribe this video and my YouTube channel. Bye bye.